When I initially read The Ontology of the Photographic Image by Andre Bazin, a section within What is Cinema, I was taken back by how odd the writing was, focusing on critiquing art, specifically art realism, and then explaining how photography was the savior for man's undisputed urge for realism. Only upon a second reading did I realize that the piece served better as an example of elitism, with his arguments coming off as mostly pretentious philosophy. Now, I wouldn't have a bold stance without an explanation, but first to summarize the concepts found within the piece. Bazin comes from a point of view of describing the history of man's fascination of preserving what is around them in time, initially starting the section out with an analogy of the Egyptian embalmment to preserve life after death. And I quote, Survival as depending on the continued existence of the corporeal body, found on page 9, it is then followed by how painting for subjects such as King Louis XIV served a similar purpose as a prevention of someone's second death, referencing the concept that one only truly dies when they are forgotten. This leads into the dilemma that art struggled with throughout history, to be as realistic as possible, to represent a perfect embodiment of a model preserved in time. Bazin argues that art could never satisfy this criterion, as the hand of the artist is limited. The central idea of the paper, therefore, relies on the concept that art is created to satisfy the urge for realism of a subject or model, and that, quote, no matter how skillful the painter, his work was always in a fee to an inescapable subjectivity. The fact that a human hand intervened cast a shadow of doubt over the image, found on page 12. It is therefore in photography where a man found a way in completely satisfying our appetite for illusion by mechanical reproduction in the making of which man plays no part, page 12. Coming to the conclusion that art, specifically art realism, has become obsolete in modern times and is sole valued off of an aesthetic expression. And moving forward, photography will be the one true form of capturing realism. Quote, Henceforth, Pascal's condemnation of paintings is itself rendered vain since the photograph, found on page 16. Now, my opinion of the piece being pretentious comes from the evaluation of art and its relation to photography. I do understand that this was published in the year 1960, so the eventual evolution of photography and cinema may influence my thoughts, but could not influence his. However, this does not forgive the elitism depicted around photography. The quote, photography does not create eternity as art does, it embalms time, rescuing it simply from its proper corruption, comes off out of context and in context as a jab at art, believing it to never be capable of explaining a model, a term used often within the text to stand in for a subject, better than a photo. The problem I have comes in his blind faith in the capabilities of a camera to capture an image. This quote from earlier shows a belief that man is not essential to photography. Hopefully he does not mean in a literal sense, but even as a figurative speech, it discounts the influence any individual photographer has on the piece. If his concept of photography being made without man was true, I could place a camera lazily wherever I wanted and have great photos that could sell for income. Sadly, at the very least, I would need to hit the capture button, which seems more than his literal definition. Being a good photographer is as much of an art as any painter, yet he seems hell-bent on the concept that photography is some stone-cold mechanism of capturing a model perfectly. One of my favorite quotes, a very faithful drawing may tell us more about the model, but despite the promptings of our critical intelligence, it will never have the irrational power of the photograph to bear away our faith, explains conventional art as having the capabilities to better describe and represent the subject than an image, but because we're humans and we're smart, we can tell it's fake. But a photograph, wow, a photograph is so irrationally good that it gives us faith in it being real. Wait, so we're smart enough to tell that art is not a real model, but a photograph is a real model? What is irrational if we are arguing that it's logical? And what does bear away our faith even mean? The entire concept attempts to explain that art can never capture reality as strictly as a photograph, and that rationally we enjoy the realism only capable of a photo, but begins by explaining how art does it better, and how it's irrational that we trust realism of photos more easily. Bazin constantly contradicts statements that sound as if he's talking down on art, and as if camera has brought forth the indisputable ability for mankind to have these perfect realistic images. But where Bazin is really wrong is in his concept that art mimics reality while photos are reality. He states, and I quote, the photographic image is the object itself, in reference to the art's limitation in capturing a model. But in what ways are photographs and paintings different? Neither are actually the object itself, both are forms of two-dimensional representations of our reality, both are subject to artistic capabilities of the creator, and both serve as an escape from the limitations of reality. The direct attack on art 
as a lesser medium to photography made by Bazin's writings, serve no purpose but to class artists and photographers separately with differing values, even when they share more in common than they do separately. My point of picking this scholarship is to point out the need to evaluate past theorists, not only in the light of their time period, but also in the light of their direction of influence. This entire piece served a singular purpose, to explain how photography is so much better than art. It did exactly that for those who followed his scriptures like truth, but when you actually take a look at it without the veil of him being an influential in cinema history, this piece sounds more like elitist propaganda. A better evaluation of photography comparing to art should include the benefits of both rather than tearing apart one or the other.